My name is Kwabena Chenche Hinebwati. Many thanks for joining us here on Newsdesk. President John Dramani Mama has stated he has the moral character to back his personal commitment to fight corruption in Ghana. He told the BBC Focus on Africa yesterday that he has never taken a bribe before in response to questions about his moral standing on the subject. Well, let's first take a listen to the president and then delve into the substantive issue of his fight against corruption in the country. What about you, Mr. President? Have you been offered a bribe before? Um, you mean as president? As John Mahama? As a human being? As a person? Any human being in the world would have encountered, you know, uh, corruption in a way, uh, one way or the other, either being offered a bribe or a bribe being demanded uh, you from, from you. What you need to do is to put yourself in a position... Mr. President, did you take it? <laughs> no, I haven't taken a bribe. <laughs> No, but I'm just going to explain to you. What you need to do is to put yourself in a position where you you you, you are not offered a bribe, and, and that's what I've done. I don't take decisions on procurement. I don't take decisions in respect of anything as president. All that is done at the technical level, and so at the technical level, they decide who should win a contract, and if they want it fair and square, that's it. So that was the President John Romani Mahama in an interview there with the BBC yesterday saying that uh, he has never taken a bribe in his lifetime and indeed he does speak of his moral character uh, suggesting that uh, indeed he is willing and ready to fight corruption any day and he does go on to say a lot more about his fight against corruption in the country. We'll be having a discussion on this in a short while because we are trying to uh, get onto the phone line some anti-corruption uh, campaigners but uh, still on the issue of the president in the UK, we do know that a group calling itself Concerned Ghanaians Living in the UK, that that particular group is planning a demonstration today against President John Romani Mahama. Well, according to the group, President Mahama's poor handling of the economy and the increasing cases of corruption in his government makes him unfit to lead Ghana. President Mahama is in the UK, as we all know, for an anti-corruption conference and is expected to interact with some Ghanaians living in the country later today. Let's go live now to the United Kingdom and speak to Nana Ansa Obofo, who is the convener for the Coalition of Ghanaians Against Corruption in the UK. Nana Ansa, uh, good morning. Many thanks for your time here on News there, sir. Yes, uh, um, good morning to you too, and um, good morning to your listeners right. and viewers. Okay, so uh, essentially, I, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around the fact that you choose to demonstrate against the president and at this particular time. I mean, what's the idea behind that? Well, thank you very much. Uh, the idea behind that is that um, there's been a lot of corruption scandals that have rocked uh, this particular administration. And we thought, as a matter of fact, if the president is willing to uh, fight corruption, but now we will see, I mean, potent measures being put, being put in place to make sure all those who have, who have mis mismanaged our finances will be put before the law calls, for the, for the law to take its proper course. Because I can't be in UK and listen to join News and hear that, I mean, a contract between the Transport Ministry and Smarties was signed on a single sheet amounting to 3.6 million Ghana cities. And the minister had the guts to go to both origin, tell the people about it that if they lose the elections, she'll go to jail. It's enough evidence in any serious jurisdiction or in proper jurisdiction, but now Jafar Tibo will be facing the law. But the president is shooting her. The 2014 Democratic Commission report, it indicted a lot of appointees in government, every the free answer, Kajet Guasari. They are a Jubilee House with the president and a lot keep us eating. Sada, a lot of money, millions of Ghana cities was thrown away. David Didi is working on the streets of Ghana, Ghana, eating, drinking water, breathing, and the poor people continue to suffer. Look at the kind of terrible economic crisis that Ghanaians face. It is it, unbearable. So we thought the president coming to England or London after the summit try, trying to meet Ghanaians in, in, in England will at least come to the Ghanaian community in every country. There are well black leaves. And if you come to London, talk about Dawson, Seven Sisters, Edmonton, Wood Green, Waterstone, Leighton, Leightonstone, and the president chose to have this particular session or meeting at an expensive hotel in southwest London. We just don't get it. So we plan, it's just a short notice, but we chose to go there, demonstrate, 
we will present our petition to him to make sure that he will put his feet down. The scandals rocking his government is too terrible. Okay, Ghana so, so uh, it's, it's good. It's good to make mention of. Uh, people will not suffer the way they're suffering. Right. Uh, it's good to make mention of uh, certain things that you see as scandals that have rocked uh, the presidency of uh, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. But he suggests that uh, he has thrown the spotlight on corruption, hence the numerous incidents of corruption we do hear about. And instead of he shielding people and hiding the fact that corruption persists, he's rather exposing it. And for him, that's the first step if we really want to fight corruption in the country. Don't you think that's uh, quite a reasonable thing? No, no, no. I totally disagree. Throwing light on corruption scandals doesn't mean you're fighting corruption. He says that's the first no. step. You, you, need to, you need to first expose it and then you get rid of no, it. No, 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 no. You expose it so far as there's enough evidence, the attorney general must go to court to prosecute. But, but, but that's what's happening. Is that what's happening? We, we do know that and the AG no is in court. Even the prime minister will embezzle a, a penny and they and, 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 and will tell us that... He, He's been exposed, so that is it. No. For the past eight years, for the past eight years, a lot has gone down. Money has gone down the drain. I mean, you buy with me. We're here. Nowadays, living in the diaspora doesn't mean like the olden days where you can do tape recordings and send it to you. We know what is happening. When you're online, I can watch more TV. Join news at Doom TV, live on my phone. You get me? So we hear everything. I have families in Ghana. A, a wife, three children, I pay school fees. The scandals are too are becoming too many. The recent one, the finance minister said, "Take how can it divert two fifty million Ghana cities to a to a private bank, UBA? Why not ADB or commercial bank? Why?" And they will tell you they will give you all sorts of reasons, which are not soundable. So we are saying the president should not tell, be, be telling us he's doing light on it, and that's all. No, we want to see people being being tried. So in years ago, so people were shot. Uh, exa exactly my go. point, Nana, and, 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 and this is happening. We do know that the, the AG is handling quite a number of these issues. So uh, maybe you, you might say that the process is a bit slow, but that's, that's the process. There isn't much you can do about no, it, can no, we? No, no, no. I believe our judicial system, I mean, if, if you want to do things proper or better, or the attorney general department want to do things proper, a better perspective whereby Ghanaians will accept that they are doing it, they are not selling anybody. They can do far better than what they are doing. They can do far better than, than what they are doing. What they are doing is a protest uh, practice. Protest practice. And we, we, we are not pleased because we can't sit down. We are the youth. I'm 36 years old. We cannot sit down for our money to go down the drain for our leaders to embezzle it. And then we will suffer. Look at tariffs in Ghana. Light bill, water bill. Is it affordable? Mm. If that's how life, is, life in England is, can we live here? No way. The people over here, they are much, much more prudent with their financial administration. They make sure nobody will invest. You can never go, you can never go through a train station just to jump on a train without paying. Not right. even the prime minister. No way. Okay. So, so what our country, our leaders, we have to hold them to task. A lot of money is in Ghana. Ghana can do far better than Britain. I've never seen a cocoa tree for the past five years, I believe, in England. I've never seen a cocoa tree. What do they have? Okay. They have nothing. All right. Everything is imported. But look at Britain. So uh, the, the president wants to go there, tell him he can do better, and he has to do, put his feet down, and all his corrupt ministers to order. So, so, so that's what's contained in your statement, uh, that petition you're going to present to the president. You want him to do yes, what? To, yes, to yes, start certain ministers and who have aspect, allegedly been see, implicated in one case or the other? Diaspora, the last election, we witnessed or saw uh, what happened uh, during the election petition. We don't want that, that to happen again. We want the, the, the Electoral Commission to do a proper way to okay. make sure we have a credible, transparent, and a clean voter register so okay. that during the, after the election, they to declare the results, all parties will accept it. How okay. can you tell me? In this Ghana, 58 years, validation is alien to Ghana. Okay, right. Now, in England. We don't go to put ID Okay. Card. Nana, Nana, I, th I think your point is well no made there. Uh, that's Nana Ansa, uh, Nana Ansa before. He is a convener for the Coalition of uh, Ghanaians Against Corruption in the UK. And that 
particular group uh, is planning on a demonstration later today. They say they're going to present a petition to His Excellency John Dramani Mahama and they want him to take a lot more action as far as the fight against corruption in the country is concerned. But let's now speak to Mary Ada, who is the program's director of Anti-Graft Coalition Against Corruption. And she's joining us on phone now with some thoughts on the issue. Madam, good morning. Many thanks for your time here on Newsdesk. Good morning and good morning to your Right. Story. So, uh, the president seems to believe that he's doing enough to fight corruption in the country. I mean, do you share that thought? Thank you very much. Um, let me first of all begin by saying that um, if you look at the past, uh, various attempts by various uh, to curb corruption have not worked well. And we still believe uh, as GNI that these attempts, even though some are working, we believe they are not working as the people of Ghana and as civil society would have wanted them. Uh, we have other experiences from other dispensations that show that the fight against corruption can be winnable and can be won effectively. And so for us in Ghana, we expect to see more action. We expect to see that more uh, institutions are acting effectively like it happens in other places. Okay, so, so ma Madam, sorry, but if, if you say you want to see more action and that uh, you want more institutions to act as they're supposed to, I mean, what really do you mean by that? Yes, we, we, we have, if we begin to say or we lie or allude that nothing is happening in the fight against corruption, that would be wrong. And that is where I depart from the gentleman who uh, you just interviewed. Mm. We believe that some little things have been done. L and little they things, are commendable. You, you For instance, now we have an anti-corruption action plan. The National Anti-Corruption Action Plan is a framework that captures the essence of the fight against corruption. For each stakeholder in Ghana to begin to fight corruption very well. Unfortunately, this document comes with a draft budget that stipulates how much money should uh, go into uh, the fight against corruption. Unfortunately, government is not providing this, but asking the various stakeholders to find the money to implement. That is not good enough. And for instance, as a uh, Somebody already said earlier, we have had situations where we believe action should be taken swiftly. And we have had examples again. And let me give an example of that. When the Smarties uh, Brandon saga came up, quickly the chief of staff instituted an inquiry. And this inquiry came up with some recommendations. Mm -hmm. And quickly they were acted on. Uh, let's also add that even though we didn't see the report at the time, and it took another group a uh, long time to get the information, it is a sign that when the leadership is committed to fight corruption, we can fight it and fight it easily. I can mention another example of the Anas uh, judicial scandal. Quickly, the president acted. Quickly, the chief justice acted. It is procedural. It's taking some time. But today, we know that some of those who were indicted and have been found culpable have either been relieved of their positions or cases have been made against them and they are going to answer to them. Quickly, let me add another example that shows that when leadership is committed, they can be resolved. Okay, so, Madam, essentially, what I gather from these many examples you are giving seems to suggest that uh, the, leader, the country's leadership is probably not really keen on fighting corruption. It's, it's probably talking about it more than dealing with the situation. So, That's it's just exactly more of a talk shop. We keep talking, it. we keep talking, and we do if, not act. And, and if, you, if you listen to the president's interviews, he is granted in London. Mm. One of the things he says is uh, he believes that uh, procurement, there are issues around procure procurement when it comes to corruption. And he has directed that when uh, procurements are so sought, we should have value uh, 
uh, audit being done, value addition audit being done, uh, to ensure that uh, the country is not being short chain. Unfortunately, that is one of the places I would beg to differ. We have a procurement law that stipulates very clearly what type of processes we should go through to do procurement in this country. We continue to flout these laws and go in for either single source or restricted sources uh, due to convenience and also due to our own self-speaking interest. Unfortunately, this has gone, and we were expecting that as this, at this conference, he, should, he would have talked about directing that every procurement in this country should go through tendering, should be done very well. He mentioned that there have been lessons learned from other places, like doing e-procurement. Those are the way we should be thinking about. Do e-procurement. The Open Government Partnership indicates that we should open up our processes. So open uh, procurement and online e-procurement is what we should be going for. We should do it transparently. We should be more accountable and we should be shown to be acting rather than continuing to talk about it as if uh, we, we, it's something we can talk about but not be able to do. The commitment is important. But let me quickly add that it is also our duty as citizens of this country to show some commitment to this fight. It is true that there is a giver and there is a receiver when it comes to issues of bribery and corruption. So as citizens, if we refuse to take and we begin to make a, a, a report on the uh, uh, demands made on us by those who are supposed to serve us, then we would be making an impact as well. And let me commend the media in this regard, because for the past few years, the media has been up and doing when it comes to investigations, when it comes to bringing up these issues for us to talk about. And that is commendable. So as we are doing our part, we expect that the people we have put in places of power mm. should also dispense of their mandate with dispatch as quickly as swift. Remember that when justice is, is not served as swiftly as possible, it is not as is corrective as it is supposed to be. Indeed. Indeed. Mariada, many thanks for your time on News Desk this morning. And uh, Mary Ada is, uh, well, she's the Programs Director of anti grafts Coalition Against Corruption, and uh, she's been sharing some thoughts on this. Well, she seems to believe that uh, there isn't the will to fight corruption in the country, and she sees uh, what the president has been doing so far as a mere talk shop and not really putting the words into action. We'll be speaking some more about this very issue, but let's now head to the Upper West Region where there's a bit of a disturbing news there because we are told that two people have reportedly died following a coalition between the Utombas and the trailer at, the, at Tuna last night. The Kumasi-bound Utombas from Wa is said to have crashed into a trailer late last night. Let's get more on this now from the Saula Tuna Kalba District Police Commander ASP Nomado, who is joining me now on phone with uh, a lot more on this very disturbing issue there. ASP, uh, good morning. Many thanks for your time on news there, sir. ASP, good morning. Good morning, my brother. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And I, 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 was, I just called to get a lot more clarity on this very issue. Uh, what more do we know about this accident? And uh, whether or not there were any more sur any, any survivors? You do know that two people have perished. Two uh, people have been confirmed that yesterday. Uh, hello? Yes, I'm listening. Two uh, people have been confirmed that yesterday. Okay. Uh, the mate and then the... Uh, uh, like, uh, there, there is one passenger that uh, there are two who are at the front of the car. They died yesterday. Uh, and and do, do we know whether or not any other person survived and even also the cause of this very accident? And uh, I was there personally yesterday. Uh, uh, the passenger actually loaded from a uh, 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 to Kumasi yesterday around uh, 9 30 p.m. So on reaching just after Tuna, on the highway, Tola, uh, Wa Highway, just after Tuna, uh, there is a stationary vehicle parked 
just at the whole bushes of the vehicle uh, around the road. So this vehicle was coming with a headlight on. So it's like another vehicle is also coming. So it's like, according to the driver's light, uh, because of the, uh, the other vehicle coming, it's like, he was blinded. Uh, so unknowingly, he, he ran into the stationary vehicle just uh, on the lead. Uh, like that's what like, actually caused the accident. Mm. Right. Okay. So, uh, uh, well, so uh, the injured people, the injured persons were about seven. Uh, we we write them to our government for the yesterday, and then the four we conclude the dead body of the two Okay. So so far, yeah, they were two who were confirmed dead. Esvin Wado, many thanks for that update. And uh, ASP Nomado is the district police commander for Saula Tuna Kalba. And uh, he's been telling us a lot more about that very accident that has already claimed the lives of uh, two persons. That accident happened on the Tuna Road, we are told, is on, uh, it's on the Wa Kumasi Highway. And uh, one Utombas crashed into a trailer, leading to the death of these two persons. He has been giving us a lot more on uh, what really happened. He says it happened around 9.30 p.m. last night. But let's take a break here on News Desk. Uh, we'll be back shortly with some more stories. Don't go away.